Yes, it is a To come to the rostrum to receive the gold medal and the diploma. The year was 1995. The speaker, the president of Palestine. This was a year after the former Palestinian president, Yasser Arafat, was awarded Nobel Peace Prize for his efforts to create peace in the Middle East. He shared the honor with Yitzhak Rabin, a soldier who became Prime Minister of Israel in 1992, and Shimon Peres, Israel's Foreign Affairs Minister. Those in favor of the resolution, please. In 1974, Yasser Arafat addressed the UN General Assembly. He said he was holding an olive branch for peace in one hand and a freedom fighter's pistol in the other. Words that ring louder today as any hope of reconciliation between Palestine and Israel becomes a distant dream. Last month was also the 30th anniversary of the accords between Israel and the Palestinians. The deal that led to the creation of the Palestinian Authority intended to provide interim self-government for just five years while negotiations solved outstanding core issues in the conflict. Today, nearly a decade after peace talks collapsed, the Palestinian Authority remains in place but is fast losing legitimacy. But this man dared to dream the unthinkable. Yasser Arafat grew up in Cairo and Jerusalem. He took part in the war against the new state of Israel in 1948. As a qualified engineer, he took a job in Kuwait. Arafat founded the Fatah movement in the late 1950s with a view to rally the Palestinians driven out of Israel in 1948 to take up arms. His organization mounted several attacks from various Arab territories, but it was after the war of June 1967 in which Israel vanquished the armies of Egypt, Syria and Jordan in a matter of days that Fatah's central role was cemented. In 1969, Arafat and Fatah took over the Palestine Liberation Organization, that is the PLO, and effectively declared Palestinian independence from the region's power players. The group resorted to terror to attract world attention. But it gradually became clear to Arafat that he would have to accept the state of Israel for the USA to be willing to mediate in this dispute. The world took note of Arafat. In 1974, the United Nations recognized the PLO as the sole legitimate representative of the Palestinian people and Arafat in military uniform became the first representative of a non-governmental entity to address the General Assembly. Soon after PA was formed with Oslo Accords in place, Arafat was elected by an 83% landslide as the president. But soon, mistrust between Arafat and the Israelis intensified with the Palestinians claiming that Israel was not fulfilling its territorial commitments. While the Israelis complained that the PA was not doing enough to restrain a Hamas campaign of bomb attacks on civilian buses inside Israel. After the 9-11 attacks in the United States prompted the Bush administration to declare its global war on terror, Yasser Arafat found himself marginalized by the US and the Israelis, who placed him under virtual house arrest at his West Bank headquarters in Ramallah in March 2002. Soon after, Arafat appointed his old Fatah comrade, Mahmoud Abbas, as Prime Minister. In October 2004, Arafat succumbed to his illness.
The devastation in Gaza today is testimony to the fact that the path chosen by Hamas is wrong. 19 years after his death, as the Israel-Hamas war takes a new form, Yasser Arafat will be remembered as the man who dared to bridge, even though temporarily, the historic gap between the two countries. In New Delhi, this is Maria Shakil for NDTV.